Okay, so the object that I've got here is a old milk carton. Um, it's about a quart. The funny thing about it, though, is that we're going to reconcile different form types within it. So we've got, on the one hand, a box form. And on the other hand, we have a cylinder. And between them, we kind of have a, a conical form. Remember with box forms, I like to start with the bottom. Um, and then I like to bring lines up. And you always want them, all the lines to converge, just like in two-point perspective. You want to immediately start checking for divergence. Um, and one of the ways that you can check for divergence immediately is just to extend these out really far. Um, in this direction, they're more or less going to look parallel. This direction, they should converge more dramatically. Or at least just not diverge. Right? So, I can make some adjustments as necessary. Make sure everything works. Okay. Then if I need to, I want to just clean it up a little bit. I can erase some of the construction lines. Or not. It doesn't really matter. The construction lines kind of disappear as you progress through the, through the drawing anyway. Um, now, one of the more common questions that I get is how do you reconcile a, uh, a circle and a square? You know, if you look down on it, it's pretty easy to reconcile a circle and a square. You just put a circle inside a square. It's tricky when it's in perspective, right? One point perspective, you would say, well, you know, draw the X method, right? This is the center, so the center of the ellipse goes there, right? But that's not true because ellipses kind of have their own rules in perspective. Um, because an ellipse works on math, it has to be exactly the same all four quadrants, right? And if you use the perspectival center of a square, that puts the center of the ellipse up higher than it should, so it doesn't really work. So what you do is, if your square is in one point perspective like that, you just do the actual mathematical center, not the perspectival center, you dr and then you draw your ellipse inside that. And if it hits the outer edges of the square, that's fine. Doesn't matter. So basic, the basic rule of thumb with an ellipse is that it plays by its own rules. Um, now here we have a slightly different situation. We have an ellipse that isn't quite taking up the entire segment, but um, it's relatively centered. And what I like to do is just kind of more or less um, take an approximation, a good guess at where I think it is the center. And um, usually, what works is just to measure from the outside of the edge of the ellipse to the outside edge of the object and use that as, a, as an approximation. So here I might need to move it about an eighth of an inch over, right? Make some adjustments. Bring it up. So I find that that's probably going to work. Um, in this object, the box form is about the center, or is about half the height. So I can measure up and take a rough approximation of where this is going to end. Okay. 
and then I know that I'm going to have a short um, cylinder and then I'm going to transition down to kind of a cone more or less down to this um, box form. Now the crazy thing about the box form is that the box form is also rounded so I have to go back and I have to round out the edges of the box form. And that is also going to change where my edges are because they're going to kind of become inside the box form itself. The interesting thing about this particular bottle is that I can kind of still see some of the corner here. So I can kind of bring a loose um, line down this um, down this cylinder to the corner. And I can bring the corner, or I can bring the uh, the cylinder down a little bit to kind of become increasingly more accurate to what I see. And then these are kind of joined by flat sides that have sort of curved areas to them, so I can. I can bring those in too to kind of increase my accuracy and analysis of the form. So here I can bump up some line weight if I need to to kind of pick out where the actual forms are. And then I can tackle this um, internal cylinder a little bit better. And then I can get the actual sort of donut shaped things around the um, outer edge here. Get those going. And then make sure that the mouth of the bottle has some weight to it. cut it off there instead. There. Now I've got a pretty good approximation of of this bottle um, and I can do a little bit of cleanup if I need to. I can erase and reconcile things a little bit better but what I'm interested in in teaching people this sort of structural approach is that they go through this analysis and this procedure right and even though this isn't like what you would want your final product to be if you're like actually rendering this What's nice is that I can see that um, when someone does this, that they've gone through the analytical process and they've tried to figure out how this object is constructed. Um, and I think that that's really valuable in and of itself because you're learning um, how to think through creating a drawing and how to and you're learning how to think through space on the page. And I think that's really important. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you're um, if you need to if you're having trouble with say a certain segment of it like say you're having trouble with the actual lip of the of the bottle is you can kind of pick it up um, analyze it and try some different things with it and you can actually zoom zoom in if you need to so I can take a central axis and I can draw a really big version of it if I want.
so that I can really get into some analytical detail. Right? I can draw the internal ellipse of it. Inside of the cylinder. Then I can kind of, it's kind of rounded before it turns down. So I can do that, get that rounded aspect to it. If I draw through, it's going to go back through and, and under that. And then it's got a little teeny uh, vertical section under it within that. Then it's got the kind of subform element, which is down here, right? And that creates another sub cylinder. You'll notice that I'm not creating the back of the ellipses. Um, I'm just kind of following the curve that I established initially. Um, and I'm kind of doing that because the drawing is getting a little crowded already. And here I want to be sure that I hit the same outer dimension so I can drop down um, a little vertical to be sure that I do that. And again, this one's kind of rounded out. Um, and it's fairly thick, so I might need to bump that up a little bit from my, my initial stab at it. And then from there, it kind of continues downward. And then right around here is where it begins the soft transition down to the rest of the bottle. So what I recommend whenever you, and with people, this is the same thing is um, whenever you're drawing like a specific part of an object, like say you're drawing an eye or a nose and you're just working on that, draw where it connects out to the next thing. Um, and that kind of helps. Um, because if you don't do that, then you have no way to, to um, synthesize it with the information that you already know. Um, and you have no way to go back and take that knowledge that you gained from doing a detail and put it back into the um, full-size, full-scale um, object or figure that you're drawing. 